Welcome to Magnificent Monday Online, Junior Youth. And check this place out. Huge shout out to Jelena and Deanna. You don't know who Deanna is, but you do know who Jelena is. So thank you so much for making this awesome Moji Studio. You won't have to watch me in that gross background like last episode. So thank you so much, Jelena. Youth, don't forget to say thank you to Jelena. Oh, and meet Jerry, the alligator. He's going to be my assistant for Moji. In this episode, the youth leaders are going to do the try not to laugh meme challenge. And we're also going to learn what happened to the church after Stephen had died. But first, a word from your leaders. Hey Zach, you're one of your junior youth um, leaders. Um, yeah, we haven't seen you guys in a while. Over Christmas, um, didn't do a whole lot, went skating. Did some reading, um, watched World Juniors, and did some homework, and yeah, that's about it. In the office, uh, Al and Andy have been hounding me about the one particular boxing question. They were not happy with the answer that Maria, that Maria gave. What so we're going to ask the other youth leaders what they think. I think it would be a draw after round one, they'd both be done. <laughs> puffing and puffing and puffing. <laughs> So my favorite verse comes from John chapter 6. Uh, Jesus had just delivered a message to the crowds that was particularly difficult. A lot of people didn't like what he said, even though it was true. Uh, and a bunch of people that were following him had left, and they turned back and went home and stopped following him. So Jesus then turned to the 12 disciples and he said, Are you guys going to leave too? And this is what Simon Peter said. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. And that just reminds me that uh, even though the Bible is not always the popular message, uh, Jesus alone has the words of eternal life and there's nowhere else I would confidently put my hope. Try not to laugh slash smile challenge. It's a simple game. I present a meme to the leaders and they will try their best not to laugh or smile at the meme. The leader that wins will go to the challenge wall and choose a challenge for you to do. Okay, yeah. and look and breathe. How you look trying to hide sin from God. <laughs> what? Come on! It's, it's funny. Alright, give me something better. And look. Senior pastor, associate pastor, <laughs> youth pastor that made an Eddie yeah. joke from the stage. I just think of Joey. I just think it's like, that's Joey. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's Joey. <laughs> like, that's you. <laughs> and that's Andy that and Al. <laughs> that one was tough. Right. Bobby, Bobby's leading. Ready? And look. And you say God's not real because you can't see him? I don't think you saw evolution either. That's a good point. That's just true. <laughs> <laughs> Look. When your mom sees your, you getting up during church service to go to the bathroom for the tenth time. Alright. That's, okay. that's the face I would make if I was my kid. Wait, is it her face or is it Bill Clinton's face? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's that's completely different. That's that's dad beside it. I think it's all. Another <laughs> <laughs> picture we can no. <laughs> And look, our God is stronger than your God, Elijah. Is he though? Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, context. <laughs> context to that one. That's funny. Look. You done messed up, A.A. A. Ron. <laughs> I love this video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobby is... <laughs> Bobby is totally... <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> okay, round eight. A list of people volunteering for children's Yeah, use. like that's that's for real. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a that's sad. True. Look at this room. 
<laughs> look at the amount of people. And look. Girls Youth Camp counselor trying to calm down her students like, you can't marry a man you just met. Man, again, again <laughs> though, like, this is, this happens. I think it's this, so you know? I've been there. <laughs> Yeah, we, this is, yeah, yeah. Three. When David got the news that Bathsheba's husband died, he's gone. I miss him so much. False. I do not miss him. <laughs> Bobby, it's clear. Bobby wins this challenge. Let's go. Nice try, guys. Nice try. What is the answer to this riddle? It follows you when it's bright. Sometimes it's small, sometimes it's tall. And when you turn off the lights, it is not there anymore. While we meet online, we will be doing the Zoom Games Tournament. In order to gain points in the tournament, you will have to win the games we play in our Monday night meetings. You will gain 3 points if you're first place, 2 points for second place, and 1 point for third place. You can also get extra points if you do the challenge. You'll gain 2 extra points if you do the challenge before the deadline. The winners of the tournament will gain a magnificent reward. That, that sun is really bright. Saul agreed with putting him to death. On that day, a severe persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout the land of Judea and Samaria. Devout men buried Stephen and mourned deeply over him. Saul, however, was ravaging the church. He would enter house after house, drag off men and women, and put them in prison. So those who were scattered went on their way preaching the word. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowds were all paying attention to what Philip said as they listened and saw the signs he was performing. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. So Stephen, one of the church leaders, was killed. Not only that, the persecution scattered the church, they were growing, but now they were scattered. All that was left in Jerusalem were the apostles. Those who hated Jesus and those who hated the church knew that they were going to have to do something very, very, very drastic to stop the movement of the faith. So they ramped up the persecution crazy, like they went hard in the paint. That's a basketball term. One of the main leaders of this persecution was a man named Saul, and Saul went ballistic. He personally went from house to house looking for members of the church and he dragged them into the prison, both men and women. Saul was a big old jerk. The reason why Saul and the Pharisees went gung-ho on the persecution because they were afraid. Afraid that the church was turning people into paganism. Wait, hold up a minute. What is, what is paganism? Paganism, in short, is the worship of different gods. In ancient Israel, they really dealt with paganism rather harshly. Unfortunately, they did not recognize that Jesus was the same God they worshipped and was the same God that their ancestor worshipped. Through the persecution, the church was scattered. Many of them were put in jail. Many of them were killed. All that was left in Jerusalem was Peter and the OG apostles. Like, that was it. That was it for the church. They were defeated. The end. <laughs> Just kidding, that's, that's not how it ends. What happened in Jerusalem was tragic, and it was almost a knockout blow. Almost. Guess what happened to the church when they were persecuted and scattered away from Jerusalem? 
it grew. The faith grew. The persecution had an opposite effect on what happened to the church. It probably confused Saul and his friends. So the gospel was preached in different cities, and one of the cities was Samaria. In Samaria, the gospel was preached. In Samaria, a lot more people started to believe in Jesus, and a lot more people saw what the Holy Spirit can do. And it says when the gospel reached the city of Samaria, there was great joy. I really want to emphasize this to you, youth. The mission of the church is to preach the gospel. If you believe in Jesus, you are a part of the church. Your mission is not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. It might not be difficult now, but for sure, if you truly follow Jesus, it will be someday. Just, just a spoiler alert. What this story in Acts 8 teaches us is that God can turn something that was meant for evil into good. Something that could glorify His name and something that could forward the gospel. Remember, this persecution done by Paul and the Pharisees, it was supposed to end the church. It was supposed to end the movement of the gospel. But it didn't happen. Be encouraged because that is the God that we worship. Our God is a God that can turn persecution into victory. Our God is someone who can turn hurt into great joy. That is the God that we worship. This is one of the reasons why we have a junior youth ministry. I and your youth leaders are here to equip you and to encourage you to become courageous messengers of God. So I hope this story of Acts 8 encourages you, gives you hope, and uh, that is it. We'll see you guys on Monday. Peace!